Make ready the way of the Lord, clear to no straight path. The Lord be with you. And also with you. In the second week of Advent, as we light today the peace candle, or the candle of the prophet, stir up our hearts, O God, to prepare the path of our Son Jesus. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign, the young woman, pregnant, about to bear a son, shall name him Emmanuel. Almighty and loving God, you who dwell within our hearts at every waking moment, keep us always close to you. Help us to recognize and appreciate the gifts and talents you have given us. Teach us to use our energies for the good of others and the glory of your Son, Jesus, whose incarnation gives us hope and peace. Keep our hearts and minds alert to your peaceful and loving presence in every prayer, in every act of worship, and what we do for others. Amen. At this time, one of the beautiful traditions of our church is the blessing of our flock wafers, which is, which is typically exchanged on Christmas Eve. Let us do it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the Lord, who has given comfort to his people, be with you. And also with you. Beloved, throughout salvific history, bread has symbolized both the covenant between God and man, and the source of man's salvation. The ancient priests and kings of Salem, Melchizedek, offered bread as a sacrifice to God, blessing upon Abraham. The bread of angels rained down from heaven manna was the primary source of nourishment for the Hebrew nation in the wilderness. Our Lord multiplied a few loaves of bread in the desert and fed thousands. He then took bread, consecrated it, and made it his very body for the salvation Mankind. The Christmas wafers that will be blessed today also remind us of the covenant between God and man and the perfect expression of his covenant through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The impressions of the bread visualize the moment in time when God became man, born of a woman. The sharing of the bread is an outward expression of the love of God feels for his creation and the love of Christ shared by Christian faith. Brothers and sisters, listen to the words of Holy Scripture. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. You nourish your people with food of angels, and furnish them with bread from heaven, ready to hand, uncoiled for, endowed with all delight, and conforming to every taste. For this substance of yours revealed your sweetness towards your children, and so the desire of him who received it. It is blended whatever flavor suits one wish. That your sons whom you love might learn the Lord, that it is not the various kinds of fruit that serves men, but it is your word that preserves those who believe in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose hand and word you create all things, are made pure and holy out of your blessing on these Christmas wafers. Grant that all who partake in them in accordance with your will and your law and in the spirit of thanksgiving may experience by your power health of body and soul as they invoke your most holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
and he who was in the law and in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, set the foundation of his labor, and remain with us now and forevermore. Once again to judge. 
us the secrets of the human heart. May we, who in holy fear await his coming as judge, joyfully regard him as our Savior. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lived and reigned with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Alleluia. 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 Let us fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For equal to his majesty is the mercy that he shows. Alleluia. He said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now, the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but there is one coming after me that is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable <laughs> fire. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You, Lord Jesus John the Baptist appeared. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that sentence right there is part of what Advent is all about. One of the most colorful characters in Scripture, and the one Christ would call, maybe next week, the greatest of all the prophets, and one who is 
he's in our stained glass window right behind Harold D. Arcy, right over there, for the role that he serves in prophesying in deference to our Lord and Savior. Now, last Sunday, I had the opportunity to uh, open the Advent season at my home parish, St. Joseph's in Westfield, Massachusetts, and I am the same Advent wreath that I looked at as a, as a kid and prayed over and studied as a teenager, and it was nice to see people that I hadn't seen in a really long time, the first time I had mass there since 2013. In the coffee hour afterward, I got to reminisce with some people, and there was the Bryce family, this couple that has been there since, well, well they've been married for a really long time, he's 92, she's 89, uh, both still faithful attendees at Holy Mass. I spoke to, to Mr. Bryce about, you know, what life in the church has been for the last 16 years being ordained and all other sorts of stuff and the good old days at the parish when how competitive it was with our elbows going out at the altar with our 16 18 altar boys um, trying to find who was going to do the next job and sneaking in plays of football after mass and before sunday school after sunday school and before the next mass and i prefaced the finale of my story to, to mr bryce i said you know you're not going to remember this eddie but uh you know, we were playing football one day, and he interrupted me. He says, you ended up on the hood of my car. <laughs> 92 that he was, that memory was still very sharp in his eye, and he said that was a brand new car, and I had those footprints, and I studied everybody's shoes until I figured out what it was. And that right there is that little hint of why Jesus said, in St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 4, a prophet is not without honors in his own town, among relatives, in his own home. They know you too well. Now, in my homily last week, I ended up waxing on the past, um, again, seeing all those familiar faces, um, as much as focusing on the liturgy and what Advent is, um, which is probably expected by those in attendance. You know, that's kind of what you want to hear. You want to hear about the good old days. But that's kind of what we do throughout the entirety of the Advent season. We look at the past and sort of what is going on today as well. We take into account what is prophetic and what is going on in the time of Christ more severely during Advent than any other time? So what is going on? What can we glean from today's scripture so far? In this time of the prophet Isaiah, our first reading, we got this little snippet from uh, the 11th chapter of his prophecy. This is known as the Merodach prophecy. It's familiar to us. We've heard this one before. Uh, it pops up during every Advent season. If you came during the week, it pops up a few times. And he used, it is used to speak of the peace that the coming Messiah will provide. Peace Sunday, peace candle, a message of peace. Now in real time, by the prophet Isaiah, we can see how uh, this connects with people. The fact that the spirit of the Lord would rest upon a leader went with the idea that if somebody were to become a king, not just in, uh, among the Israelites, but in the surrounding tribes, that they were often offered a portion of divinity, given divine powers to do stuff. This is a belief system at the time. And though Isaiah was prophesying to the Jewish people, this was at a time where the Jewish people were without a home. They were dispersed throughout everything surrounding what we know as the Holy Land, living among other ethnicities, among other practices. And of course, when you do that, you dip your toes in practices that perhaps against the faith or you're not familiar with. It's hard then, like it is now, to practice a religion when others around you don't. That's 2022 right there. We know this in a world whose collective faith is shrinking by the day. But some of these prophecies work for everyone, not just the Jewish people. You see how much they talk about animals, the prophet Isaiah. And that whole thing about the animals that we heard about representing peace, it makes us go, all yeah, right, all right, this stuff could happen. But in the ancient world, wild animal attacks were so prevalent that this was a source of peace for people, that there will be a time, a sign, where you don't have to worry about that anymore. In 2022, that's like telling us now, you can use your credit card and you don't have to worry about your ID getting stolen ever. That stuff will never happen again. It's the best I can do with a nowadays sort of thing. Peace that is promised. That's our second Advent candle, and then the readings from Isaiah. 
When we jump ahead to John the Baptist's ministry, I'm always taken back to the traditional rite of the Holy Mass. If we can rewind our clocks a little bit, or <clears throat> before the 1960s, or when we have the old traditional rite here, and how it concluded. For a period of time in the entirety of the Catholic Church, Mass always concluded after the, the blessing of the priest with the reading of what was called the Last Gospel. And the Last Gospel was the beginning of St. John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And if we know it, when we start one of those things, you know, even the altars used to have altar cards right here so that the priest could read it from right there um, with his back to the people, actually, um, as he uh, lined up that last gospel. Some of that was actually in our introit verse at the beginning of Mass, because I know it's, it's starting to sound a little familiar. And it speaks of John the Evangelist providing the runway for what John the Baptist's role was in the story of our salvation. And voila! As I open the homily today, John the Baptist appeared. He's preaching in the wilderness, in the desert of the country of Judea, um, because, well, if we know something about those times, the wilderness, the desert, is away from everybody else, and the number one thing to avoid in Roman uh, occupation was to avoid issues of crowd control. So by going in the desert, no Roman soldiers were out there. You could uh, preach whatever you want. You could do stuff. And the Romans weren't bothered with crowd control, that desire to quell large gatherings, which might be uh, revolutions against Roman occupancy. So without the amenities of civilization, John preaches of repentance. Of another one who would actually come from the wilderness as well. And the crowd is growing. His words are so strong, and his ability is... It's so much that people keep on showing up to the point that his crowds just to watch his baptisms included Pharisees and Sadducees, city slickers we can call them, that would challenge our Lord eventually. And John calls them a brood of vipers. I feel bad about that. You know why that's a bad thing to say? I, I'll look at John Spilka real quick because we know in Polish, John, that one of the worst things to say is the dog's blood, right? Well, we, don't, we don't say that in Polish. Um, I don't know quite why, and I'm not going to go in and don't Google it either. We don't want to know why. But it is one of the worst things to say in the Polish language. We got those, those idioms in English as well. And brood of vipers was an ancient idiom for this reason. Uh, vipers were thought to uh, not only uh, to, to grow in their mother, to hatch, and to eat their way out. And by virtue of that, killing their mother in the process. So calling anyone, let alone a religious leader, a brood of vipers was pointing your finger at them and saying, you are killers, murderers, parent murderers. Nothing worse than that. John later mentions how his baptism is that of, of water. Baptism of any sort or any ritual cleansing was prevalent in this time of Judaism uh, in order to enter a new synagogue and a community if you moved, especially if somebody was coming from uh, outside of Judaism, a Gentile as we call it, there was a ritualistic cleansing with water immersion all the way under the water, usually in a flowing river, um, in order to welcome them to be cleansed ceremonially, uh, to be welcomed into the faith. He says it's fine for this time, but of course, that one, the other one coming from the wilderness, that baptism would be a fire of the Holy Spirit way beyond anything John was capable of doing, so much so that he couldn't even hold his candles. We'll hear about John next week as well. And the, the cliffhanger here is that on a Sunday where peace is preached to begin Mass, we see how John prepared for that peace with repentance and then with a promise of spirit and fire. It's maybe not so peaceable that we look at. Sometimes peace comes in different ways for different people in different eras. And our peace that's promised on this Sunday of Advent in the person of our Savior and the way we appreciate those messengers is what we're after today. The prophets of peace in Isaiah and in John the Baptist. We continue to reflect on them during the celebration of Holy Mass. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the hero of life, who proceeds from the Father. As the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. <clears throat> oh Lord, be with you.
and sisters, our sacrifice may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father.
your death, Lord Jesus, we proclaim, your resurrection we celebrate, your return in glory we await. Therefore, Father, we remember his saving passion, his glorious resurrection, and his exaltation at your right hand. We await his coming in the fullness of majesty. We here set, we here set forth this sign of our faith in him, who offered you the perfect sacrifice and gained for us eternal salvation your Holy Spirit, the giver of life and holiness, upon us and upon these gifts, the bread and wine of eternal life. Holy Spirit, come to us, fill us with your gift of grace. Take these gifts from our hands, Lord God, as an acceptable sacrifice, to which we offer ourselves to you, so that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless can be shared in the body and blood of your Son. May all who receive from your heavenly altar always remain united with you, together with all your saints and chosen ones, the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, with your prophets and apostles, with your martyrs and confessors, and with all who stand about your throne in praise and prayer. Grant also, Lord, to share in that glory to the departed and to those who remember before you, especially, Lord, as we offer this Mass to Stella and Jack White. merciful kindness and let perpetual light shine upon them. Remember also your servants on earth for whom you invoke your mercy and those who raise in prayer and intercession. For Martin and Lionel Copley, for Marcia and Lionel Copley. Bless your church throughout the world, bring unity and peace, renew the earth according to your promise, and to all peoples and grant that all nations may give you thanks, worshiping and praising your holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father, in the words our Savior gave us.
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the table of the Lord. My friend, I ask you as always to come to receive Holy Communion with its cleansing. And please communicate with family over here. Uh, over here, as usual, to line up along the communion rail. And for those, I know there's lots of bugs going around on the top of page 102 in your pew books. It's an act of spiritual communion. Mm -hmm.
your son has gathered around his table, praise and glorify you, and proclaim your name before all the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lived and reigned with you in the Holy 